Emily, your safety trainer, and in today's video, we'll be talking about flamethrower safety. Introduction. Flamethrowers, first making their mark on the battlefields of World War I, are an incredible tool that have been adapted and repurposed for everyday applications. From land management to pest control to special effects in the entertainment industry, these unique and intimidating tools can be found almost anywhere. Despite common misperception, flamethrowers may be legal for use in all states, except Maryland, but their misuse poses a significant hazard to operators and those around them. So how can we work with flamethrowers safely? With some proper training, a dose of common sense, and following the safety protocols outlined by manufacturers, we can work with flamethrowers without any worry. This lesson will cover the different uses of flamethrowers as well as necessary precautions to keep us safe and having fun while using this awesome tool. Possessing and operating a flamethrower in California does require a permit from the state fire marshal, so please speak with your supervisor if you have any questions about that. It's also important to note that while state regulations may allow for the use of flamethrowers, cities and other local agencies may place additional restrictions on their use in their areas. So if you're ever unsure of local regulations when it comes to flamethrowers, please reach out to your supervisor for clarification. Common uses of flamethrowers. Flamethrowers are more than just a tool of war. In fact, they can be incredibly versatile and efficient tools. Commonly used for ground clearing and controlled agricultural burns, as well as melting ice or snow and incinerating weeds. Flamethrowers are also employed for forestry activities, such as implementing backburns for fire containment. Not only this, but they're also frequently used for creating dramatic effects in film productions and even insect control. With such a wide range of applications, it's no wonder why flamethrowers remain popular tools among the agricultural and forestry industries. Enjoying this safety video? There's more where that came from on Got Safety Light. Sign up for free and gain access to our library of over 1,800 safety videos. If we don't have the lesson you're looking for, we'll make it at no cost. Click the link to sign up today. Hazards. When operating a flamethrower, serious hazards are present and should not be overlooked. Direct exposure to flame or contact with hot surfaces can cause severe burns, and sparks or flames from the equipment can ignite nearby flammable materials. There's also the risk of fire due to fuel being ignited during tank filling processes. Furthermore, accidental shock could occur if the user or someone else comes into contact with the electrode system. This is especially dangerous if flammable liquid or gas are present. Accordingly, those using a flamethrower should be aware that they may be exposed to items such as butane, propane, gas, diesel, or ethanol, and pressurized gas fumes taking necessary precautions before use and abiding by safety instructions will help negate potential risks associated with flamethrowers. For more information on lithium battery hazards, please refer to our lithium battery fire safety and lithium batteries handling and transport lessons. Safe work practices before operating the flamethrower. Before using a flamethrower, it is important to follow specific safety protocols to reduce the risk of harm or accidental fire. First and foremost, you should read the owner's manual that came with your flamethrower in detail and become familiar with its instructions. You should also check for wind and other weather conditions. Flamethrowers should only be operated when temperatures meet the manufacturer's specified ranges. Inspect your unit prior to use and make sure there are no signs of worn or damaged parts. If you find any issues with your flamethrower, such as damage or wear, do not attempt to operate it and notify a supervisor. Additionally, if applicable, inspect pressurized gas canisters for any leakage or damage before operating. These canisters should never be used if they are leaking or otherwise damaged in any way. While using lithium batteries, it is important to inspect them for any visible signs of damage, such as bulging, punctures, etc. Should there be any signs of damage, the battery should not be used and the supervisor should be alerted immediately. Damaged batteries can potentially explode and therefore need to be placed in fireproof location until the appropriate local agency is contacted for further instructions on how to dispose them safely. It's also essential to make sure that all batteries are properly charged and connected according to the instructions provided by the manufacturer to ensure safe operation. When filling the flamethrower with fuel, it is vital to follow the manufacturer's instructions closely. 
make sure to only use approved materials in the specified amount, and always check for any leakage before lighting the pilot flame. It is important to ensure that fueling of the flamethrower takes place on a grounded surface, as this creates an additional safety layer against static buildup. Never smoke while fueling the flamethrower or light up of any kind of open flame as the risk of explosion is very high. Areas with particular restrictions may also require certain adjustments. For example, California limits flamethrowers to flames extending no further than 10 feet. Once filled, check that there are no leaks in the tank, and report any leaking tanks to your supervisor. Should you come across a leaking tank, then avoid it entirely. Make sure that you have a fire extinguisher hose or other means of putting out flames and easy access to the area where you will be operating the flamethrower. When operating the flamethrower Operating a flamethrower is a serious matter, and it should only be done by trained and authorized employees. Everyone operating the flamethrower must not be under the influence of drugs or alcohol, as this could have serious consequences. Instructions should be followed according to the manufacturer advice. Any angles or inclines should not exceed 45 degrees due to potential fuel dripping onto the operator. Furthermore, make sure the flamethrower is only pointed towards its intended target and nothing else, such as people, animals, or anything else that wasn't meant to be burnt. Finally, keep your body parts away from the nozzle and any energized parts to prevent burns or high voltage shocks before and after use. Dropping the flamethrower should also be avoided at all costs, as it could damage the components. Storing the flamethrower. When storing a flamethrower, you will need to store it in accordance to the manufacturer's instructions, as well as maintain the manufacturer recommended fuel levels in reservoirs when storing the flamethrower. In addition, store batteries in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions. Conclusion Although these flamethrowers can be incredibly helpful in some scenarios, their potential for harm should never be underestimated. Always follow the manufacturer's instructions when it comes to operating and maintaining your flamethrower, as well as consult with your organization's policies and procedures. Remember to never point the device towards any living being or anything you don't want to potentially ignite. Just exercise a good measure of caution. Last but not least, make sure your flamethrower is stored in accordance with the provided instructions. Better safe than sorry. If at any point you have questions or concerns about using your flamethrower, don't hesitate to reach out to your supervisor for assistance. That's all for today's lesson. If you like this video, look for us on social media and remember, stay safe out there. Thank you.